Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about animating symbols and how to animate your rig once you get past that, that mouse shape step. So in the last video, I have the audio right here, which I'm muting just so we don't have to listen to it. And I have my mouse shapes that I use the replacement animation. And so all that is in my last video. And so now let's talk about the next step. And so just to kind of recap some of the reasons why we use symbols on certain areas of this rig is there's kind of two fundamental reasons to use, or two main reasons to use symbols while rigging. And so the first is with the parenting right here. So right here, the body is the main parent. And then the neck is um, the child after that. And the child after that is the head null right there. And then everything else is the child of the head null. And Basically, the way it works is if something is going to be the parent to something else, it needs to be a symbol or else when you move it, nothing else is going to move along with it right there. So you can see the body is the main parent, so everything moves with it. If I were to move the neck right there, you can see that everything else except for the body would move to it with it because the body is the parent of the head. And so essentially, none of that parenting works unless you use symbols for the parents. Um, what I will add to that, though, is that all the stuff that's at the end of that parenting tree, the, the children, if nothing's parented to them, it doesn't matter whether they're a symbol or not. So, for instance, this eyelash right here, if I zoom in on it, I'm using kind of what I call is like the drawbridge technique for my eyes. You can see that these eyelashes are not symbols right there, and it doesn't matter because they're the children right here. So if I move the body, and I'll press Q, that shortcut you can see the eyelash still moves along with it right there and so before you begin animating it's good just to kind of like test this oops it's good just to kind of test this rig out and try to move it a little bit also make sure that you've extended it for the full duration of the audio clip right there um, if you try to extend these layers right here especially since they're parented after the fact once you've started animating and all that it gets really messy really quick so you just want to make sure that your your whole rig lasts each layer lasts as long as you need it to before you kind of get started here okay so that's <laughs> that was a long tangent the other reason for using symbols is you can do something called creating tweens right here and before i kind of get into showing you how to create tweens i want to just walk you through kind of step by step how to kind of go about animating this. So I'm not going to animate this whole character here during this lesson because that would take too long, but I just want to give you a layout of the way I do things. So when I'm animating a character, I like to start big and then kind of move to the smaller areas, especially with a character rig like this. And I kind of approach this in a similar way as when I animate in a program like Maya, where I first create keyframes that kind of jump from one keyframe to the next and then get the whole performance kind of looking the way that I want it to. And then I start in betweening, tweening, all that stuff. So I'll show you tweening in just one moment here, but I just want to kind of give you a sense of what I'm talking about right there. So for this character, I kind of have the mouth movement and I need to do the jaw movement, um, but I'm, good, I'm not going to show that in this video because that's, that's just a little bit more of like a detail thing. Um, and I'm going to kind of basically, once I have the mouth moving, I'm going to start with the, the neck and the head null right here. So the head null for my character moves their head like that. And then the neck, when I move it, moves like that. And so let's just say as she's talking, she tilts her head to screen right, and then she tilts her head from to screen left. And that's kind of her main body movements right there. So the first thing I need to do is kind of figure out the timing of that and set those keyframes. So I could start with the neck or the head null. In this case, I'm just going to stick with the head null for a second. And so I'm going to create a keyframe by clicking on this button. If you don't see this button called Insert Keyframe, you can go up to the workspace and go to Basic, and you'll see it right there. Um, and I just press that undo. I don't know what just happened there, but it created kind of two. And so that whenever you create a keyframe, it's creating a copy of the frame that came before it, essentially. And so what I need to do is I'm going to create a new position. So I have I can press Q or the free transform tool. And if I'm not seeing the null right there, I can just click on the keyframe and it'll highlight. And I'll rotate it a little bit to the right. By the way, if if you try that and it's snapping by like 15 degree increments or the computer is kind of not letting you rotate where you want it to, just go to, let's see here, view 
snapping and then turn off whatever snapping you need to right there. So it's view snapping and then turn off what you need right there. Um, okay, so I have her rotating her head to the right. And let's say I'm just also going to rotate her neck a little bit as well. So I'm kind of concentrating on the neck and the head movement. So I'm going to insert another keyframe for the neck as well and just give that a little bit, just a tiny bit of motion right there as well. So she goes from that position to that position right there. And let's say, I don't know, around frame 70, she rotates her head screen left. So I'm going to, with a head null, I'm going to insert a keyframe right there. And with Q or the free transform tool, I'm going to rotate it back to that position. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at my character and trying to figure out what, what looks like the best pose. So for the neck, same idea. I'm going to insert a keyframe and just give it a little bit of rotation back that way. OK. And so essentially what I recommend you do is I'm just for this tutorial, I'm just going to concentrate on the head and the neck. And hopefully for you, you're going to have like the jaw to work out, eye movements, right? You kind of animate your eyes and try to create the whole performance just by creating keyframes like this. And your character will kind of jump from one position to the next. But you'll have like a good sense of like, is this overall idea working? And you're not going to be married and gone too deep down to too many rabbit holes of tweens and all that. Um, and you've kind of, um, how do you say this, approximated your performance as best as you could with keyframes right there. Okay, so um, next up, what I like to do is I kind of try to think for a second, let's say that, well, let's, let's concentrate on the beginning of this animation right here. So she starts neutral and then she kind of rotates her head to the right. So a decision you need to make here before we start tweening is how long does she hold her head static before she starts the movement towards this first keyframe right here. And what I'm going to say for this is let's say she holds until frame seven and then she starts to animate. So her head starts to animate. So I'm going to click right here, insert a keyframe. Remember it's copying and pasting whatever that last keyframe was, a copy of it. And so right here, she's going to stay still. And then I'm going to create tweens right here to have her animate her head from this position right here to this position. So let's finally start to go over what, what tweens are right here. So uh, uh, what a tween is, is, and I'll show this in just a second, is Adobe Animate takes your, your keyframe position right here, and then it takes your keyframe position right here, and then it just finds the straight velocity between those two and kind of fills it out for you. So it doesn't just teleport from one position to the next. So in order to create that tween, all you need to do is hover your cursor over this area right here, and then you right click, and then you go to create classic tween. So you, you notice that there's some different options that you have right here. And for this rig, what I highly recommend is just go to the top op option, create classic tween. That's probably, I think that's what you're going to want. Some of the others can cause some hairy stuff to happen right here. So I have a purple arrow that is created right there. And let's just go ahead and I'm going to create another one down here as well. So I'm going to right click, create classic tween. So now I have a tween for the neck and the head right there for that first bit of animation. So I'll press play. And we have a tween right there. So let me just set this to loop so that you can kind of see this a little bit better. And so something you'll notice right here is the velocity when you create a tween is entirely consistent, right? It's basically just imagine that that head is moving at, you know, five miles an hour the whole time. And it, it doesn't have, take any time to kind of slow down towards the end or kind of speed up or anything like that. It's just a computer, computerized consistent velocity. So something that I like to do in order to kind of give this my own touch is if you click on the tween right there, so just click right there and it's anywhere where that purple arrow is. And if you have properties pulled up, so look under properties and you should see a tweening panel right here under properties. And again, you won't see this unless you click right here. And you'll notice that we have like classic ease and some options like this. And so you can kind of choose from like some different um, options, some default options right there. So you can, you can click on that right there to enable that. And what I like to do is I just, I find this easier, is I just click on the pencil right here and then I can just kind of create it myself. And so you can create your own ease in and ease out 
a few different ways. So you can click straight on the line and then just drag around and you'll get this anchor point with two beziers on either side of it. And you can move things that way. And sometimes I use that, but the main thing that I use is I'll just click on the first anchor point and you'll see this little tiny bezier handle come up and I can pull it up and I'll do the same thing up here. So you have to click on the little black dot and then it generates the bezier for you. And then you can move it like that. And so this is not going to look quite right, but I just want to show it just in order to demonstrate this. Is so the way that this, this graph works is this is time measured in frames right here, going from left to right. Up and down, I basically just think of as velocity. And so <clears throat> I'll make this exaggerated right here. So with this curve right here, it's going it, to, right at the beginning, it's going to go super fast. It's basically going to teleport at the beginning and then it's going to slow way down and ease in to the last keyframe. And so I'm just going to do that for both of these real quick so that we can kind of see what that looks like. And then it's not going to look right and so we'll fix it right after that. So I'll press play. All right, so you can kind of see that it starts really fast and then it eases in to the keyframe right there. Um, so if I want to change that, so the first thing you can do if you want to change it, if you have a tween and you just don't like it and you want to get rid of it, just right click on it. So hover your cursor above the purple area, right click, remove classic tween, it's gone. So that's the way you remove it right there. If you want to adjust it, just click your mouse right there. Instead of right clicking and deleting, you just go back to this pencil tool over here under properties. And I can pull up that same graph and I can make alterations to this right here. And remember, I, I prefer to kind of just draw in my own my own graphs right here but you don't have to and you can if you choose remember you can kind of go up here to effect and choose and you can even see it stores a history of your own right here so you can kind of copy and paste your own or you can kind of go in and kind of find some of your your some of these other defaults right here but if i go into cu custom i just created ease three right there so i have that and where that's really useful is I have right my head movement, but also have my neck movement. And so if I want my neck movement to have the same properties, I can just click on it and click on the effect my ease and then choose version three and it'll be exactly identical to the first one that I made right there. And so you see that I feel like that looks a lot more pleasant, you know, to the eye right there. And so things that you can do to continue to adjust this is once you create tweens, you can still change the timing of things. So let's say that I want this to last a little bit longer, the, the head movement. I can click on that keyframe and just move it forward a little bit like that. Same thing for the beginning keyframe. All I have to do is just click on it, and I should be able to just drag it back like that. And so you can do subtle changes like that. So now it's going to just be slightly staggered. I might even want to stagger it just a little bit more just to kind of help show this a little bit. And so you can slightly stagger your movement like this. That might have been a little bit too much. Let me just press F2 real quick. All right, let's just do a one frame stagger right here. And so you can kind of stagger movement or you can do bigger changes where if you want these both to be, you know, much longer, you can, oops, click and drag and extend your animation like that. I often find that I have to do it one at a time though. So just click and drag, click and come on, click and drag right there. And so changing your timing up is, should be really straightforward right here. And so that's the basics of tweening right there. And so just taking this a step forward, so we have the character move right there. And so something you can do is remember our next keyframe comes around frame 70 and they kind of, their head jumps back to screen left. And so you have a couple options right here. Do you think that they should hold their head towards screen right and kind of stay there for a moment and then start to move their head back? Or do you think their head should be in constant movement? And it's a decision that you kind of have to make as an animator. Um, so let's just say um, that we have their, the character kind of tilt their head, they stay still for a moment, and then we're gonna insert a keyframe, insert a keyframe, and then we're gonna create tweens right here as they move their head back to screen right. 
So I'm just going to click right here where I want that tween to go in the timeline. Right click, create classic tween. Same thing down here, click, right click, classic tween right there. And so we'll kind of see this. There's not going to be any ease in, ease out right there. So if I want some ease in, I can just click again right in that tween area right there. I can choose between some options right here. And I'm just going to choose my own custom one right here, just because I want this to move a little bit differently. Um, I want it to kind of start slow. So you see this is called My Ease 4. Let's thinking about this. I guess I, this is a demo, so I don't need to get this perfect. Okay, save and apply. And so you can see that created My Ease 4 right there. So again, I can click on this second one. And instead of redrawing this from scratch, I can just click right here under Effect, go to Custom, and I can choose My Ease 4, and it's going to be exactly identical to that top one right there. So looking at this again, we have her tilting her head, tilting it back right there. And so that's kind of some of the advantages of using tweens right there. So something you might notice on this is the mouths are moving at, in twos and threes. You know, it's kind of jumping from one thing to the other. And the head movement is a little more computerized looking. And so this is completely subjective. Um, for, many, for many of you, this is going to be great right here. And kind of having some of that, that clean kind of movement right there is the ideal thing right there. Um, something, here's a trick that you can do at the end though. So let's say that you want this whole thing to feel a little bit more hand-drawn or stop motiony, uh, which is a technical term. Um, so a trick that you can do, and again, do not do this until the very, very, very end. You know, so maybe before you do this, this is like right when you're about to print, you set it to print, you know, export it and for a finished version. And before you do this step, I would even recommending just go file, save as, and you know, save a version for yourself that you're, you're saying like version six, and say about to export, something like that. And because this is, this is a pain in the butt to undo, basically. Um, but what you can do right here is um, with this tween area, I can just click in there and I can right click and I can convert to frame by frame animation. And so you can see right here, you can set it so that it creates, it turns the tweens into either a frame by frame in ones. You can have it in twos, threes, fours, or even custom right here. And so for my character, I feel like twos is going to look good. So I'm going to click on that and you can see it converts everything into twos. And so the reason, hopefully it's clear why I wanted to kind of save this for the very end, because normally with these tweens, if I want to get rid of it, or alter it anyway, I can just click and drag and right click and remove the tween. It's very easy to adjust. Getting rid of this, I need to, I mean, it's not that hard, but I need to hold shift and right click and remove frames and, you know, kind of start from scratch a little bit, right? So this is a step to kind of save for the very end right here. So as you right click in the tween, convert to frame by frame animation. I prefer twos. I'm just a really big fan of twos, just broadly speaking. Um, and that's just a personal preference right there. So when we press play, you can see that instead of it being animated in kind of like, like that very digital ones look, it's kind of converted to twos, which is a much closer frame rate to the mouth shapes right there. And so that can be like a cool trick for the end right there. And it's just, it's totally stylistic and it's up to you which one you decide to do. So um, that's how you animate symbols. And hopefully that's as clear a video as possible right there. And remember that um, tweens only works with symbols. And so again, with these eyelashes right here, which are not symbols, I'm going to need to, if I want to animate this, kind of animate it a little bit by hand right here where it's, um, let's just say I'm animating the right eyelash. I'm going to press A for the sub selection tool and I'll create my first keyframe. And let's say I want her to blink. I'll press A and have her blink right there. Oh, whoops. Sorry. I'll insert a second keyframe and then I'll click the eyelash and blink right there. And so you can see right here that if I want to get in between those two things, I can't right click 
and it, it, it says that it creates a twain, but it, it doesn't really, right? It's like only halfway working right there. Um, and so often what you end up needing to do when you don't have symbols is just kind of set your keyframes in the extreme poses and then just kind of go in by hand, and it's really not that bad, and just kind of find the in-between moments right here. So if I wanted to animate this in ones, you know, I might find the, the middle position like that. Go to the next frame. Also, if you just click and drag, oops, if you just click the anchor point, and again, this is the sub-selection tool, which is A right there. If I just click and drag, if you look at the timeline, it is automatically, oops. Sorry about that. Here we go. If I click and drag like that, um, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Insert keyframe. There we go. And so this is, you know, that's a little bit of a mess right there. I need to clean that up. But it's it, with the timing. But you can see you kind of need to animate it um, frame by frame a little bit like that. And I personally really, honestly, I don't even see that as that big of a problem. I find a real charm in kind of that frame by frame, the imperfect animation that happens out of that. So it's really up to you how you decide to do it. And that's kind of my main advice for getting started with the character animation rig.